Before this video starts, I just want to point out that this video is not sponsored. Anyways, enjoy. All right, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm Harry, and today I'll show you peeps on how to edit a video. Now, normally I don't usually do like the behind the scenes work, especially on my channel, but today it's going to be a little bit different as I'm sent out on a task not sponsored, to help you people on how to edit a video in Adobe Premiere Pro. Since editing is a very big topic, I want to start off with the basics. And to not confuse you all, I'll be splitting the video into 10 different parts, and YouTube would help me by splitting up the timeline as well. Anyways, let's go to the setup upstairs and show you guys on how to edit a video. Please subscribe. Now that I'm up here at the setup, let's first fire up Premiere Pro. So first, press the Windows key and type in Premiere Pro. Next, click on the app and launch it. One eternity later. Now once you're inside the main menu of Premiere Pro, click New Project. Name your project whatever you want, I'm just gonna name it What My Camera Setup Looks Like. Demo. Now what you want to do is you can choose your location of your project. So uh, mine's in my external YouTube and Twitch drive, but you can set it to anything you prefer, like OneDrive, your documents, or your downloads folder. Now just press OK, and you should be loaded up with a screen like this. Understanding the top bars, file, edit, window, etc. So this thing here is what I call the top bar. The top bar consists of file, edit, clip, sequence, and etc. These drop down menus over here changes your projects in ways they describe. Now, first let's go over file. File gives you new project, open your project, open a recent project, you can close, close project, or close all projects. In file, you can also save, save as, and just save your project. And you can also import, export, and do many other stuff like your properties for project settings and project manager. In edit, which is um, basically editing your video, uh, you can undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, paste, insert, duplicate, whatever. Um, these are this is very important as well. Clip. I don't normally use clip, but this one is just um, basically replacing your clip and editing. Blah blah blah. Sequence is what I do is sequence effects. Uh, they I re-render my sequence and timeline, and render the audios, delete render files, and that's what I normally do. In markers, I don't really use markers, but you can mark your actual video if you get lost. In graphics, it's basically like text and fonts and stuff like that. In view, basically you can just view your playback, um, which is going to be over here. Uh, window is just uh, everything that you see over here, and help obviously is Premiere Pro help. And that is the top blob explained. Importing files and understanding the media browser. So right here, this is the media browser, it's where you browse all of your files and stuff like that. To import media, which is files, and videos, photos, uh, whatever that you want to edit, uh, all you've got to do is double click import media and then select anything you want to import. But there is also another way, and that is to just basically drag your files straight into the media browser and it basically copies everything in and it should be able to do it within the same time if you do it both the same way. Understanding and creating the sequence and timeline. So right here this is called the sequence or the timeline. Timeline is what I use. So in the timeline, basically you just do everything in order and you edit everything on the timeline. So what you want to do to create a timeline is first drag in your files. I'm going to drag in my intro. So my intro here is now created a sequence or a timeline. Now a sequence and timeline would also be created here and if you want to rename it, you can just click the name and then say anything like what my camera setup looks like demo timeline. Now that is now that will change over here. So once you export, it will be the same name. General cropping and understanding the toolbar. The toolbar is this thing right here. You have select. Uh, you have track select forward tool. You have the ripple edit tool, you have the razor tool, you have the slip tool, you have the pen tool, you have the hand tool, and you have the type tool, or I should call it the text tool. 
Now, um, cropping is super easy. So all you gotta do is just highlight at the end of a clip and you can drag it forward until you have the desired crop that you want. Now, another way to crop is to use the razor tool. So if you go into your toolbar here, press the razor tool, highlight where you wanna crop it, select the selection tool or press V on your keyboard and then you can just delete and then drag this in. Another cool feature is to do ripple delete and that is if you right click, pressing ripple delete, it automatically deletes and pushes your next film forward or clip I should say. Understanding the effects control tab. So right here, if you click onto one of your videos or clips, you can see an effects control tab pops up, which is over here. Now you have many options in here and the effect controls basically, as the name says, control your effects. So uh, you can have video and audio and that's the first two things that comes up if you imported a video. So now what you want to do, um, I can MCCB. fix my effects right now. And I can fix the position, scale and rotation. So as you can see in my video right here, I'm a little bit slanted because my tripod didn't really, you know, work out. So I'm going to rotate this thing a few, a few degrees until it is perfectly, oh whoops, um, until it is perfect, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, rotation until it is perfectly straight enough and synced like that. And now, I, as you can see, I have black bars all around the mouthful of words that I just don't know what I'm talking about. So to fix these bars, I like to zoom in by clicking on scale, moving it forward until I can't see any black bars, just like this. Now you can see this is now all lined up straight and also the black bars are gone. So that's a super thing that you can do. And now we'll get onto audio afterwards. Audio fixing, the effects control tab. Now right now my audio sounds a little like quiet and a little weird because only one side of my headphones work. So I'll play it back and I'll show you what I mean. Hey guys, it's Dr. K and welcome back to another video on the channel. So in today's video, I'll be going over Okay, as you can see, my right ear is too loud and my left ear, you can't just hear it. And also, the sound is just really quiet. So, what we do is we go into effects control and we fix that. So, as we know, our my right ear is just too loud. So, let's just raise the left ear by 6 decibels and let's see what it sounds like now. Hey guys, it's Dr. K and welcome back to another video on the channel. So, in today's video much better. As you can tell, if I just adjust the left by a few more decibels than the right, I can even out the audio levels on both sides and it will achieve a much pleasure audio listening experience. I don't know why I said that. Transitions. Now let's get to the fun part where I teach you guys how to do a transition. So first things first, I'm going to drag my next clip in and then I'm going to show you guys a transition. So one of the easiest transitions is to do like the fade transition. Uh, this one is where you just highlight in the middle of these two clips, right click and press add default transitions. Now it just looks like a normal fade. Just like that. So uh, this one is one of my usual ones. I don't really use it that much because I use my own custom Transition. So I'm going to show you how to do one of my signature transitions and that is the zoom in and the zoom out effect. So first things first, what you want to do is select this thing right here and drag it to the end. Now what you want to do is put your timeline in the middle and then click your right button three times, six times is what I meant to say. And that will make sure your video is six frame forward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, go into your toolbar and press the razor tool or just press C on your keyboard. Now you can crop it right here, press V again which is selection tool and then go all the way back to the middle again. Now what we can do is go left 6 times. So another way you can skip 5 frames at a time is hold shift and then whatever direction you're going, that's 5. That's 5 right there, I can prove it to you, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now just go forward by one more, press the C tool, which is the razor tool, 
and now press the V. Now what you want to do is select these two, right click, and what I like to do is unlink them, because the audio and the video is both linked. So right now I can, I'm going to delete the video, or I mean I meant to delete the audio. So now what I can do is uh, select the video, right click, and then press nest. This means they will combine these two videos into one. So press OK. As you can see, there will be a nested sequence right here. Now to do the like the zoom in, zoom out effect, I like to go to my effects panel and search transform. Now it's going to be in distort video effects and transforms right here. Now what you want to do is just drag the effect and place it onto the nested sequence. Now the way you do this is by putting your timeline to the start of the transition. What you want to do now is make sure you're in transform and not video because this thing is very important. First of all, I uh, just put a just click the stopwatch on scale and then it will create a keyframe right here. A keyframe is basically um, an effect within a keyframe or time in your video or clip. So now after you created a keyframe, all you gotta do is now move this thing to the move the timeline into the middle, set your scale to 300 um, and now what you can do is go forward a bit, set it back to 100 and then drag this keyframe to the end. Now what you can do is right click this, press ease in, right click this, press auto bezier and then right click this and press ease out. This will make the transition more smooth. And now what you can do is untick use composition shutter angle and then now we can adjust some motion blur so put 360 on and it's gonna look the best. And now you can play the effects through but I don't know if my PC is gonna lag out but I was still trying to show you guys. It's a pretty good transition. It has a motion blur go in and then draws out back with another motion blur. So basically it's one of my favorite ones. And there you go, that one worked. Captioning toolbar. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to caption your videos. So right now I'm just gonna do the simple text tool. So first I set an important message. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new text tool. There's multiple ways of doing text tools and that is either by using the toolbar or by using your keyboard. So with the toolbar, it's very easy. Just press the toolbar and then press somewhere up here. And then now it will just load you a um, place to type. I don't like really using this, so I'm just gonna out Z and delete this. What I like to do is just press Control T, which is basically a new text layer. Now you can just edit anything you want and let's say, hello. And this is like one of the easiest type of captioning you can do. So if you want to change the actual font, press Control A or highlight everything. Go into here and make sure you drop down the text, not the video, because if you change the video, it's not going to work. So let's just see we, what color we can choose. So you can press fill and then you can choose any color. Uh, let's say red. There you go, red hello. And now you can also do a stroke, which is basically like a layer on the outside. But as you can see, I can barely see that right now. So I can change the width and let's put it to like five. Uh, wait, whoops, you have to select everything, put it to five. And now you can kind of see a bit more. So let's go all out 20. 20 you can actually finally see it so there you go hello and you can change the font as well by going into this and I like to either do luckiest guy big Burbank big condensed or American captain um, I'm just gonna go Burbank big condensed because it's my favorite um, caption font to use so you can align you can change the bigness uh, did I just say bigness? You can change the size and you can actually do a background, um, but it doesn't look good um, in like a back uh, black screen. So you can also do a shadow, which you definitely can't see because it's a black screen behind. And also you can overlay it on some kind of video. So then when you go over here, you have like a video um, text upon. So let's, uh, you can also crop it just like usual and basically this is the effects control tab and use the control tab make whatever you want and that's captioning effects tutorial green screen so today i'm gonna today 
So right now I'm going to show you how to edit a green screen now and use the effects panel. So um, I have this Tactica subscribe button that you should all subscribe. Um, so now we can just, uh, you see there's like a big black bar, like a giant black screen, not bar, like a giant black screen, not a bar. So what you can do right now is right click and press set to frame size and it will just bring it up right now. And now what you can do is go ahead into your effects um, panel and then search for ultra key or whatever effects you're looking for and drag it onto the clip just like we did with the transition and the transform. Now with ultra key you can select your key color which is um, green in my case so I'm going to click the selection tool and then click the green and then now as you can see the green screen is finally cut out. And this is very useful because then you don't just see a bit of green, you see the actual video as well. And also make sure to click that subscribe button as well. Now I'm going to be throwing in an extra tip here. As you can see my timeline is really 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 laggy and that is because it ain't rendered. You see this red thing over here? That just means it's not rendered which means playback's going to be extremely laggy and sometimes it will just stop just like that and it will just be super laggy. So the way you fix that is go into your top bar, your sequence and then press render into out. This way it will render all of your files so you can have a smoother playback. Exporting the timeline. Alright everyone so now I'm going to teach you guys after you finished editing everything uh, to export the timeline which means make this whole thing an actual file so you can upload and do whatever you want with it. So the way you do it is first you click the timeline right here by just clicking the name or anywhere in this bar right here. This way you can export the timeline and you can't export anything else. So now what you want to do is click file at the top bar and then click export or hover over export and then press media or you can just press ctrl m but whatever. Now what you can do is uh, set your settings here. You can have the basic video settings which is 3840 by 2160 which is 4K and also 1080, 1920 by 1080 which is 1080p and 2560 by 1440 that's 1440p obviously. So basically you can also change the frame rate, you can adjust it if you want to, um, 60fps, you can change it, uh, your TV standard to NTSC or PAL, normally it's NTSC which is my favourite. And format, uh, you want to export format in H.264 and set your pre preset to custom. Now you can just uh, click on output name and then basically say anything we want, what my camera setup looks like, demo timeline.mp4 and then export video, export audio and then you can just mess around with this bit and then after you're done you can make sure that your length is correct which is 36 seconds and 23, 36.23 seconds for me and now after you're done press export and now it will start encoding rendering all your files including your audio and your video and you should be done within a few minutes. Now that you know the basics to editing a video, give it a try yourself. It's very fun and it's very entertaining. If any of you want the clips I use today in my video to edit yourself or something like that, shoot me an email anytime at business.tactic at gmail.com or you can send me a DM on Instagram, which you should be following by now, at tacticayt, and I'll reply to you over there. Anyways, thank you all and I will see you in the next one.